What's up guys, Phil here, Doctor of Physical Therapy. Today we're going to talk about getting lost in the details. So you see, we are trained in physical therapy to look at the minute little details of movement. While that's good, and that's what separates us from other healthcare disciplines, I feel like sometimes people get too caught up in figuring out the little details of movement. Don't get me wrong, sometimes it's important to point out dynamic knee valgus, which is when the knee comes in during something like a squat, or someone having an excessive amount of shoulder shrugging while trying to raise their arm up in the air. These are all things that we can point out and keep in mind, but maybe we're putting too many of our eggs in the movement basket. In other words, physical therapists often believe that you're hurting because of things like, you should have lifted your left arch up by two more millimeters during your squat. You should have pushed your knee out by an inch while climbing that step. Or you should have squeezed your glute 30% harder when you were running. Or my personal favorite, you should have tightened up your abs more when you're just living life. It's like we're always trying to identify the one thing, the little movement change that will make an impact. And quite honestly, PT education makes it seem like there's one way to move, period. Basically, if you don't do it this way, you're bound to get hurt. Like that's not a realistic message and that's not a good message to send to patients. Because in reality, things are more complicated. Or maybe it's actually more simple than that. More on that later. Here's the thing, the body is adaptable. This is one of the biggest lessons I've learned from prominent PT figures in the community, such as Greg Lehman and Adam Meekins. We can zoom in and nerd out on all the faulty movements all we want, but what if it does not change the person's symptoms? What if that's not causing your experience of pain? Then what? Because out in the real world, people have different anatomies, people have different training backgrounds, people have different goals. Sometimes what you need is changing up that movement pattern and then things will get better. But other times that may not be what you need. You can't fit everybody into the same box. So let's give an example. You're just a recreational runner. You're used to running 20 miles a week, but you're so eager to sign up for a marathon training program where you bump up your mileage to 40 miles a week. So you've just doubled your training volume in a very short time. This sudden increase in training volume will inevitably increase your chances of injury. But the funny thing is, does that mean if you do this, you'll 100% get injured? Nope, maybe you'll get really sore for a couple weeks and then your body adapts to it. But is this a smart training decision? Probably not. And just based off of this alone can tell you a lot without doing a lot. You see, we didn't even look at your running form, we didn't even look at your running speed. This reminds me of a concept called Occam's razor, which means that the simplest explanation is usually the right one. So you see, in this case, it's actually simpler to not look at movement. And being a responsible physical therapist, are you gonna look at running form? Of course, you should definitely take a look and see if there are any things glaring that can be changed. Instead of pointing your finger at the movement or at the running itself, zoom out a little bit and figure out what other things that may contribute to this person's presentation. Unfortunately, this is the simple things that often get neglected by PTs or by doctors. And continuing with our example of the runner, you get told to stop running because it's bad for your knees, which is a total myth and not supported by research. This often happens with barbell athletes too. They get told not to squat or not to deadlift because that's bad for you. You get frustrated because you love running or you love weightlifting. You listen, you stop running, you stop weightlifting. You can become more deconditioned, less active, and you just go down this downward spiral of less and less activities. And guess what? That's not where you wanna be when you age. So don't just blame the lifting or don't just blame the running. Zoom out a little bit, see the bigger picture. It might just be the volume. It could be the running, or maybe it's like a little strength issue. And of course, I'm not saying to not look at movement. Of course, have your movement assessed by a professional, but you can't neglect the bigger picture. Let me know what you think. If you liked the video, like the video, and you know where to find me.